So if it's the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors that determine what a matrix does, then we want to know how to find those, those eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So here's what we do. If we're looking for, um, if we have an eigenvector, then we know that when we take our matrix times that eigenvector, all that happens is that a scalar multiplies the eigenvector. So the matrix A treats this vector in a special way. All it does is multiply it by some scalar. Now what we could do is rearrange this so that we have um, the zero vector on one side. Now that we've got, um, got that, we could actually um, think about this, uh, think about writing this as a matrix times a vector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about this, um, this scalar lambda times v. I'm going to think about v as being a matrix times v, and the matrix is the identity matrix. Now we can factor out the v because we have a matrix times this vector. So now it turns out that if this has a solution other than just sort of the simple make v all zeros, if this if this matrix equation is going to have a non-trivial solution, then the determinant of a minus lambda i is going to be equal to zero. And this determinant is actually um, a polynomial in lambda. So by the time, because you know you take the determinant of a matrix, that gets you down to a single scalar, right? So this is this is a scalar that involves um, involves lambda here as well as the numbers in this matrix A, and so we have a polynomial actually when we multiply it out. So if we can we can solve that, the solutions of this polynomial will be our will be our eigenvalues. Once we have the eigenvalues, then we can go and pick up the the eigenvectors. So the solutions of this polynomial will be the eigenvalues. Okay, let's look at an example here. We've got this matrix, right? This is what we're thinking of as our matrix A. And what we need to do is to find the determinant of A minus lambda I. So we're talking about finding the determinant of, here's our matrix A, negative 11, 8, 8, 1. And the identity matrix would have ones on the diagonal and zeros off the diagonal, but if you multiply it by this eigenvalue lambda, it looks like this. Okay, which is, if we combine these matrices by um, um, subtracting the components, let's see, negative 11 minus lambda, 8 minus 0, so that's still 8, 8 minus 0, that's still 8, and then 1 minus lambda. When we take that determinant, we're going to get negative 11 minus lambda times 1 minus 11 minus 8 times 8 is 64, and we set that equal to 0. You see, if I multiply this out, there's a negative lambda times negative lambda, so that's going to be a lambda squared. We've got a plus 11 lambda and a minus, a lamb and minus lambda, so that's plus 10 lambda. And then we've got negative 11 times 1, that's minus 11, and minus 64 equal to 0. So for a 2 by 2 matrix, if you're trying to solve this eigenvalue, you, when you set up this, um, this determinant equation to find the, the eigenvalues, you get a second degree uh, determinant. If it's a 3 by 3, a second degree polynomial. If it's a 3 by 3 matrix, you get a third degree polynomial. 4 by 4, you get a fourth degree polynomial, and so on. So you end up having, this equation is actually sometimes called the characteristic equation. It helps determine what the eigenvalues are. Now, to solve a quadratic, we could always use the quadratic formula, or if it's, if it's factorable, we could do that as well. And I think this one is, as to get um, 75, you can do 5 times 15. So if I do a plus 15 and a minus, oops, a minus 5, then that should work. Let's check. We have lambda squared, mi minus 5 lambda plus 15 lambda would be 10 lambda, and 5 times um, 15 is 75. So yeah, that tells us that we have two eigenvalues, negative 15 and 5. Okay, so we found our eigenvalues. That means that if you had, um, if this was like your second derivative matrix, right, one eigenvalue is negative, one's positive, so you know that the function would be 
would have a saddle there at a, at a critical point if this was your set your Hessian at that critical point. Um, we also have that information actually just from the determinant, right? Because the determinant is the product of the eigenvalues. If you take neg you have a negative 11 here at minus 64, that's negative 75. Notice that is actually the product of the the eigenvalues. So our little second derivative test is really just checking to see what are the signs of the eigenvalues. But here we've actually found the eigenvalues. We know what they are. Now once you have the eigenvalues, the next question is to find the eigenvectors. So remember the eigenvalues of this matrix were um, negative 15 and 5. So let's go and find the eigenvectors. Now again, we have this idea that um, A times an eigenvector will be the eigenvalue times that vector. So, or we rewrote this as a minus lambda i times the eigenvector will be equal to zero. So what we can do for each value of lambda, figure out what a minus lambda i is, and then figure out what are the solutions to this equation. So let's start with our lambda equals five. So if lambda equals five, then a minus lambda i is, let's see, negative 16, 8, and uh, 1 minus 5 would be negative 4. So <clears throat> we just want to find um, we just want to find the solution right, of this. We want to find the values of my eigenvector v1 so that we get the zero, the zero vector 0, 0 here. Okay, so we have these two equations. Probably the, the best thing to do here is just to um, just to do elimination here. If I take half of this row and add it to that row, then half of negative 16 is negative 8. Add that to 8 and we get 0. Half of 8 is 4. Add that to negative 4 and we get 0. So we're really just looking for a v1 and a v2 so that we get 0, 0. That's really just this single equation that negative 16 v1 plus 8v2 has to be equal to 0. Or um, if I solve for v2, 8v2 has to be equal to 16v1. So v2 just has to, be ha has to be 2 times v1. So any vector, like let's say we take v1 to be 1, then v2 has to just be twice that. This is one eigenvector that's associated with lambda equals 5. But you could do um, any other vector as long as it, it was a scalar multiple of this. So if I chose v1 to be 5, then v2 would have to be 10. These are all eigenvectors that correspond to lambda equal 5. You can even check that they do, right? If you take negative 11, 8, and 1, and you multiply it by any vector where the second entry is twice the first, like maybe 3 and 6, what do we get? Negative 33 plus 48. Negative 33 plus 48 is 15. And then we get 24 plus um, 6 is 30, which we recognize that as 5 times what we started with. Okay, now to find um, to find the other, so we have one of our eigendirections, right? Each of these are examples of eigenvectors, and in general, what we need is for the second component to be twice the first. Let's find the other eigenvector, the one associated with lambda equals negative 15. So if we do a minus lambda i, then we're just basically subtracting negative 15 on the diagonal. So negative 11 minus minus 15 would be negative 11 plus 15, that's 4. 8 minus 0 and 8 minus 0 and 1 take away negative 15 is going to be 16. So now we're trying to solve this problem where we've set lambda to be 15. Of course, if you take negative 2 times this row and add it to that row, you get this matrix. 4, 8, let's see, negative 2 times 4 would be negative 8 plus 8 makes 0. And negative 2 times 8 would be negative 16 plus 16 makes 0. So really, you're just trying to solve this equation. And <clears throat> the only one that matters is this top one. It says that 4v1 plus 8v2 has to equal 0. So that tells you that 8v2 has to be negative 4v1. So v2 has to be negative 1 half of v1. 
So now we can find any, any other eigenvector. The pattern is that the second entry has to be negative 1 half times the first entry. So eigenvectors associated with negative 15 are going to follow that pattern. For example, if v1 is 2, then v2 is negative 1 half that. Or if v1 was, um, was 8, then v2 would be negative 4. These are both examples of eigenvectors associated with that eigenvalue of negative 15. It'd be fun to kind of check and make sure that that really worked by doing the multiplication. If we go back to our original matrix A, and we multiply it by some vector like this, where the second component is negative 1 half times the first, so like by 2, negative 1, let's see what happens. We get negative 22 minus 8 would be negative 30, and uh, 16 minus 1 would be 15. And you can see what's happened here is that each of my entries has been multiplied by negative 15. So this really is um, this really is an eigenvector associated with that eigenvalue, negative 15. Every vector that has these proportions, right, that's, that's parallel to this 2, negative 1, just gets stretched by a factor of negative 15.